Welcome to one and all. This is Dr. R. Nitya Dharani, Assistant Professor from Department of Microbiology, Kaveri College for Women, Autonomous to Chi. At the onset, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to be a part of this three days national workshop on CSR Net Preparation in Life Sciences. I am indeed delighted to be sharing with you the online platform of botany for You, in which I'll be delivering a lecture from Unit 9, Diversity of Life Forms, where we'll be discussing about the outline classifications of plants, animals and microorganisms. I'm indeed delighted to be sharing this platform of botany for you in which I'll be delivering a lecture from Unit 9, Diversity of Life Forms, in which I'll be discussing about the important criteria used for classification of each taxon, classification of plants, animals and microorganisms and the evolutionary relationship among taxa. So what is classification? It is the arrangement of things in taxonomic groups in accordance with the observed similarities and it helps in understanding the group as a whole with ease. What is the need for classification? It allows scientists to identify, to group and properly name the organisms via a standardized system called the Linnaeus taxonomy. As we all know that Carolus Linnaeus is the father of taxonomy and one of his major contributions was the development of a hierarchical system of classification which we will be discussing next. It is said that all modern classification systems have their roots in the Linnaean classification system and this is done based on the similarities found in the organisms whether it may be DNA or RNA, the adaptations and also on the embryonic development. Next, let us see the criteria used for classification which includes the cell structure, body organization, the mode of nutrition and reproduction and the phylogenetic relationships. Coming to the hierarchy for classification, as stated earlier, the taxonomic hierarchy was given by a Swedish botanist, Carlos Linnaeus, who developed this in the early 1700s. The most basic classification of living things is kingdom. Next, we have the phylum and then comes the class, order, family, genus and species. So species are the lowest and most strict level of classification of living things. The main criteria for an organism to be placed in a particular species is the ability to breed with other organisms of the same species. Characteristics of living things All living things have certain distinct characters. They respond to the environment. They can grow and change, they have the ability to reproduce, have a metabolism and can breathe, they are made up of cells, they can pass traits on to offspring. So next we have the animal classification. The classification of animals is divided into two broad categories, the vertebrates and the invertebrates. Vertebrates are animals of large group distinguished by the position of a backbone or spinal column which includes the fish, birds, reptiles, mammals and amphibians. On the other hand, invertebrates don't have a backbone. They are categorized as with joint legs. Examples include insects, prawn and spiders. The other is without joint legs. Examples include earthworms and snails. This slide it shows the characteristics of vertebrate. Fish, they have scales, live in water, they are cold blooded, can lay eggs and have gills. Amphibians have smooth skin, live in water and land, they are cold blooded, can lay eggs. Reptiles have scales. They can lay eggs, they are cold blooded and have lungs. Mammals have hair or fur, they are warm blooded, they can give live birds and have lungs. Birds have feathers, they are warm blooded, can lay eggs and have lungs. Next we are going to see the classification of plants. 
the plant kingdom is divided into two sub kingdoms cryptogamia and phanerogamia so cryptogamia are plants without flower phanerogamia are plants with flower like structure or having a flower so cryptogamia is divided into three divisions thallophyta bryophyta and pteridophyta Phanerogamia is divided into two: gymnosperms and angiosperms. Gymnosperms are flower-like structures, and angiosperm possesses the real flowers. Let us now see the differences between thallophyta, bryophyta, and pteridophyta, depending upon the characters. So first, we have the habitat. Thallophyta is mostly aquatic, fresh, and marine. Both forms exist. whereas bryophyta and pteridophyta are terrestrial and they are present in damp and shady places body structure in thallophyta the body is undivided in the form of thallus in bryophyta the body is flat green thallus in case of liverworts or leafy and erect in case of mosses in pteridophyta the plant body is erect and rigid coming to true roots stems and leaves and also the vascular system so it is absent in thallophyta and bryophyta whereas is present in pteridophyta the sex organ is single celled in thallophyta is multicellular in bryophyta is multicellular and jacketed in sterile cells in case of pteridophyta This slide it shows the difference between angiosperms and gymnosperms. Angiosperms a seed is produced by flowering plant and is enclosed within an ovary. The life cycle of these plants are seasonal. Has triploid tissues. Leaves are flat in shape, hardwood type, reproductive system present in flowers that is unisexual or multisexual. whereas in gymnosperms a seed is produced by non flowering plants and are enclosed or naked these plants are evergreen has haploid tissue leaves are scale like and needle like in shape soft wood type reproductive system present in cones and are unisexual next we have the classification of microorganisms which includes prokaryotes and eukaryotes Prokaryotes are non-nucleated whereas eukaryotes are nucleated. Examples of prokaryotes include archaea, actinobacteria, cyanobacteria and eubacteria. Eukaryotes include the microalgae, microfungi and protozoa. The two kingdom classification was given by Linnaeus in the year 1758. He classified organisms on the basis of nutrition and locomotion that is the plantae and animalia in other words the plants and animals three kingdom classification system depending on the cellularity whether it's unicellular or multicellular the three kingdom concept was proposed which includes protista plantae and animalia protista are the unicellular examples include algae fungi and bacteria plantae and animalia are multicellular it was ernest haeckel who proposed the three kingdom system of classification in the year 1860 characteristic of protist they are eukaryotic which means they have a nucleus most of them have mitochondria they can be parasite and they all prefer aquatic or moist environment for their growth in the year 1969 it was robert h whitaker who proposed the five kingdom classification so this includes monera protist plants animals and fungi characteristics of monera as we all are familiar with the characteristic of plants animals and protists so let us now see the characteristic of monera and fungi characteristic of monera the monerans are unicellular organisms they contain 70s ribosomes it lacks organelles like mitochondria lysosomes plastids golgi bodies endoplasmic reticulum centromeres etc 
दे रिप्रोड्यूस एसेक्शुअली बाय बाइनरी फिशन और बडिंग कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ फंग मोस्ट फंग ग्रो एस ट्यूबुलर फिलामेंट्स कॉल्ड हाईफे एंड इंटर ओवन मास ऑफ दीज हाई फे इज कॉल्ड एज माइसीलियम फंग डिस्पर्स दम सेल्स बाय रिलीजिंग द स्पोर्स विच आर यूजली विंट ब्लोन and fungi are heterotrophic organisms the six kingdom classification carl oos came up with the six kingdom classification system in the year 1990 it is also known as the three domain system since organism classification was done in three domains that is archaea bacteria and eukarya so let us now see the characteristic of eubacteria and archaebacteria characteristics of eubacteria they are unicellular and prokaryotic their cell membrane contain lipids made up of glycerol ester lipids the cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan chromosome is circular and nucleosomes may be present ribosomes are made up of two subunits that is the larger subunit having 50s and the smaller subunit of 30s characteristic of archaebacteria archaebacteria are obligate or facultative anaerobes the cell membranes are composed of lipids they do not possess membrane bound organelles such as nuclei endoplasmic reticulum mitochondria lysosomes or chloroplast its thick cytoplasm contains all the compounds required for nutrition and metabolism they can live in a variety of environments and are hence called as extremophiles even after the six kingdom classification of microorganisms grouping was done and classification was further carried out for the reason that each classification had its own limitations so next let us see the evolutionary relationship among taxa that is a phylogeny phylogeny is the study of relationship among different group of organisms and their evolutionary development so this can be depicted in the form of phylogenetic tree it also attempts to trace the evolutionary history of all life on the planet and it is based on the phylogenetic hypothesis that all living organisms share a common ancestry with this we have come to the end of the session thank you all for your patience listening thanks to the organizing committee with special mention to dr pitambar sir for the opportunity given thank you